All praises to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Ba'asham Rakaq Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalawam to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a video going into how all the actions that people have taken in this world, man. Right? Every single thing that they've did, did in their entire life, right? Has gonna is gonna have consequences, man, and that even goes for me as well. Of course, it shouldn't even need to be said that it goes for me as well, right? But it goes for me as well. I'm not trying to make myself be outside of that, but the reason why potentially, or why I have a hope that I can be outside of that, is because I believe in your Howard Shai, man. I believe in your Howard Shai sacrifice, and that that sacrifice can cover me for any sins that I've did. Either knowingly or unknowingly, man. Romans chapter 8 and verse 33. Who is it that layeth anything to the charge of God's elect? It is Yahweh that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is a Mashiach that died because Yahweh Shai was a sacrifice for his people's sins, not for everyone, for his people, right? Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Yahweh, who also maketh intercession for us. And the thing that's funny about all these debates that these Christians that are not even Israelites, like to try and do regarding the Bible is that they try and make our forefathers be against us and before them, which is ridiculous. It's like, imagine your dad died before you was like an age, before, before you was born, right? And you never got to meet him, right? But your dad had left you an inheritance. But then some people that are not even related to you try and tell you that your dad never left you that inheritance. And that that inheritance actually belongs to them because they're part of your dad's line when they're not. They're not connected to your dad in any way. That's what these Christians have tried to do to us. They, they're not descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Either by them proving that they are or even by their own mouth confessing that they are themselves according to what they even believe themselves to be. Right? Because we can't prove that our lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But we believe that we are. But the majority of these Christians don't even believe that they go back to the line of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They don't believe that, right? They just think, oh, I'm a Gentile and that's enough. I'm not connected to Abraham in any way, but I can claim the things that are Abraham's. I'm not part of Abraham's lineage. I'm not part of Abraham's seed, but I can claim to be Abraham's seed. That's what Dave said from their own self, man. But they're not, though. And all of, this, all of these decisions that these people have made, Right, that's what this video is about. All the decisions pe these people have made are going to have consequences, man, and the people are going to have to pay for the evil that they've did. Verse 34 again, who is even who is he that condemneth it is a mushrach that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Yahweh, who also maketh intercession for us, which is the point. Because we're hoping that because Yahweh Shai died for our sins and we believe in that sacrifice, right, that we can be covered from some of the evils that we've did. Right, as long as we're not willingly going about our way to commit sins unto death and things like that, right? That we can have mercy in that time, and we still trust that there's a potential chance of mercy all the way going up to where the karagma of the beast gets brought up mandatory to the earth if we refuse that. And we understand that if we take that, then we've basically said we don't trust in the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai no more and think that there's another way that we're going to trust in to try and get make ourselves have a salvation which is outside of God. And given into the hands of men, in particular a wicked man, the Edomites, right? The most wicked nation on the earth. Right now, to the point of how I said that all these decisions that these people have made in their life, they're gonna have consequences. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to this man. Right? Second Ezra chapter 15, and let me start at verse 1. In fact, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I'll put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. And cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. Now some people can say. Oh the Bible is not this. The Bible is not that. It's been changed. The thing that gives valid validity to the Bible. Are the prophecies that are in there. Right. Now if these prophecies don't come to pass. Then people can say whatever they want to say. Right. People want to say. The Quran's this. The Quran's that. They want to say the Bible's this. The Bible's that. Right. But the thing that, that's interesting about the Bible. Is that people have been trying to disprove that book. Forever. Right, and still have not been able to do it. 
they're not able to make just make their religion or their belief valid without talking about the Bible. They have to try and put down the Bible to try and add validity to their thing, man, because their thing's whack. They already know that their thing's void. But then at the same time, a lot of these people that are against the Bible and keep always talking about how it's been changed and all of this, they'll say that they believe in the original one, but then they, they'll also say they haven't ever seen the original one. But neither have they seen the original of their own book. Neither can they quote things from their book to prove things, man. Neither when you, when you ask them about things to do with their own book, they'll always say, oh, I'm not qualified enough to speak. You're going to need to speak to the top guy of our thing. But why, why wouldn't the lower level people know? If the book's really as valid as you make out, then you should be able to open it up and read things from there. I'm not a highly ranked anything in this world, in any kind of category of anything in life, but I can open up the Bible and explain why I believe certain things from there, man. Why can't you other people with all your beliefs? Why do you need to have... Why does a, why does a person that's just an everyday person need to meet up with the highest ranked individual or one of the highly ranked individuals from your from your belief in order to get understanding why don't you know it if you say you believe in it you should know it for yourself right and that just shows the 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 fraud in these people man these people are frauds but then when you say this to them they'll get angry and they'll get emotional but then if you ask them to prove things in their from their book that they say they can't do it and then they'll just want to keep asking you about your book but they ain't even got a strong belief in their own thing, man. Verse 3. Fear not the imagined nations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against me. And that's why it's not even a big deal that these people don't believe they're supposed to. They was made to be scoffers, man. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So all the talking that these people do, all the laughing at the Bible, all the mocking, oh, it's been changed. Calling, calling people that believe in the Bible passive and all of this stuff and saying all of these things. Well, those people that you're seeing that are passive and all of this stuff, they don't even know the Bible. The average Christian don't know the Bible, man. The average Hebrew Israelite has a way better understanding of the Bible than any of these Christians. And that's why the Christian doctrine has changed since Israelites started reading the Bible. They've started to change some of their talking points and are starting to talk about completely different things now than they ever spoke about before. But if their doctrine was already set, they would have already had things to say about all of those things. They would have already had an understanding on, on who the Edomites were. They would have already had an understanding of who the curses of Deuteronomy 28 was on. They would have already had a prophecy and a point of history that they can point to, to say that Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 happened to. But once Israelites started talking about these things, then all of a sudden they changed their talking points, man. Like with this Volcab Malone character, once upon a time, he said that the Edomites are done away with, right? Then another point is saying, oh, nah, there's, there's, you have to not abhor Edomite. Then another time he's saying, oh, well, I think that these people are Edomites. Or I think that these people are Edomites. He just changes it all the time. But if he actually had a strong belief in what he thinks that is, he wouldn't need to change it, right? He would already have, he'd already have had things to say regarding that that he would have already been speaking about for ages and would just after every single time the same thing gets asked to him, this is the answer. He wouldn't need to start all of a sudden now going back and trying to study, oh, who the Edomites are, oh, these people in the Edomites, these, we can't, you can't prove that. You can't show when the Edomites have been destroyed and then you can't show that the Edomites have been destroyed and then show how prophecy has also been fulfilled because of what statement you're making and they can't show this. Verse 5, Behold, saith Yahweh, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction. Now, why is this going to happen? For wickedness, wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and the hurtful works are fulfilled. Now, why is wickedness coming upon the earth? Is it because people are not living according to God's laws? Because it's funny how these Christians have a talking point of how we're sinners, we're sinners, we're sinners, sinning, sinning and all of this, right? talking about how people are going to burn in hell forever, which is not in the Bible, by the way. But these same people that believe that you're going to burn in hell forever, right? For Not, not oh, you're going to burn in hell for 25 years because you was 25 and did 25 years of sins. No, they say you're going to burn in hell forever, right? Yet these people don't think that you have to, that you should try and not eat pork. 
because it's written in the law that you're not supposed to eat it. They, but these people believe you're going to burn in hell forever for being a sinner. That's ridiculous, man. Imagine as imagine as a woman that's dating a man, right? And she knows that this man has got the ability to burn her body forever if she does anything that he don't say. But then she just does it and does whatever he don't say anyway. Like, come on, that's ridiculous. Or if there's a person in in that's a prisoner in a in a prison, and they know that if they break any of those rules in that prison, right, get caught breaking those rules in that prison, they're going to burn in hell forever. You think they're going to break those things? They're going to try a lot harder than stumbling at eating pork anyway. But these Christians have made the law be done away with according to their doctrine just so that they can eat pork because that's the, always the thing that they always want to be able to do. They want the law to be done away with so they can eat pork. When you really think about it, that's always, they want the law to be done away so that they can eat what they want to eat because they don't want to have to go to a restaurant and for there to be a burger, right? And them to have to say to the person when they're ordering the burger, I don't want pork on there because they don't want that look that they get given like, Ugh, why, why don't you eat? They don't want to have to answer those questions. So they want to just be able to be cool with every, oh, I can eat what you eat, but I'm believing Lord, the Lord though. But when I'm out and I'm about, you don't see nothing different in me than what you see in anybody else. I'm able to live exactly the same way as all these other people, but I claim I believe in the Lord because I've got a cross around my neck now. Like really think about what these Christians are doing when they say the laws are done away with. The only thing they really are trying to make the law be done away with for the reason for is so that they can eat whatever they want to eat. Because they don't say, oh, the law's done away with so you can commit adultery now. They don't say that. It's always the law's done away with so that they can eat pork. And that's how you know that pork has got a heavy evil spirit attached to it, man. And that the eating of pork is damn near like a gateway into wickedness. And that's why when you understand and you've read the if you've read the history of the Maccabees, that's one of the things they was trying to get the Israelites to do, man, to eat pork and to eat foods that you're not supposed to eat. Because once they could get them to do that, then they could get them to do everything else. Verse 6, for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and the hurtful works of a film, meaning that God's allowing this stuff to happen, man. But there's going to come a certain point where people do sins, especially the rulers of this world right now who are the Edomites. They're going to commit a certain type of sin and after that, it's going to be over for them, man. And all these people that have got been living these different ways that they think, oh, it's acceptable, I can do what I want to do. They're going to get humbled, man, and they're going to find out that actually, no, you can't do whatever you want to do. You can't just get away with doing what you want to do, man. There's a there's a judgment for that. There's a spiritual cost for doing the wickedness that you want to do, man. Verse 7, Therefore saith the Lord, Yahweh, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. So because these people have been able to get away with doing all this stuff for so long and boasting about yamming up pork, Right. Not even being like, you know what, let me find an alternative, man. So I'm not I, I like pork, but let me you know what? Turkey rashes is actually lawful to eat. So let me just have turkey rashes instead. They'll be like, nah, forget that. I'ma eat pork. And in fact, I'ma eat pork and, and flex it online. And then I'm gonna say Axe said I could do it. I'ma just say the book of Axe says I can do that. But then if I see somebody else doing some eating eating a dog, if I see a Japanese or a Chinese or some next person eating a dog, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at them and frown at my face because in the land that I'm from, it's not socially acceptable to eat dog. So I'm going to frown at my face at that, but I'm going to eat pork though. But I'm going to push up my face and frown on people for eating that kind of stuff though. Or for eating a, um, eating a sea urchin. I'm going to look at them dodgy for that because I ain't had that before, or I'm going to look at them dodgy because they ate an ostrich, or because they ate a lion meat, or because they ate monkey. I'm going to look at them, or because they ate a pigeon. Let's say if these one of these Christians saw us hit a pigeon over the head with a slingshot, right, and take that back home and eat it. You think they're not going to look at us dodgy for that? But I thought that everything's lawful to eat. So don't look at me no way. Don't look at me no kind of way, man. If they see me eating leopard meat, they'd probably try and look at me some type of way, right? If they seen me walk a dog with a dog on a leash and they're like, oh, I didn't know you had a dog. 
mate. And I was like, nah, this ain't my, this ain't my dog. This ain't my pet. This is my dinner. I'm just walking it to the house. I'm about to cook this up, man. You want some? They'd look at you dodgy. But then at the same time, they'll say, oh, you can eat pork. Because they just want to be able to do what they want to do, man. But if they see somebody eating something that they don't think socially acceptable, they're going to have a problem with that. Because they've just said that the law's done away with ultimately so that they can eat pork, man. That's the only thing that they really even care about for the law to be done away with so that they can do. And so that they can shave their beard off, man. They just want to be able to do whatever they want to do. And then they want to try and make out as though the Israelites have to have been given the burden to keep the law. But then a Gentile only has to believe in the Messiah. And, that, and in, their, in their eyes, that would seem fair, right? It's ridiculous. Their doctrines all over the place, man. Verse 8, I will, behold, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness because God's going to get you people, man, that I thought it's okay to just mock his laws. Now, we're not saved by keeping them, but why, why are you going to mock the sacrifice of the Messiah if you believe in his sacrifice and just keep adding more and more debt to your wickedness? You, here it is, you're already in debt for your sins. And you're going to add more and more debt onto it. If someone's in a million pounds worth of debt and they found out that someone's going to pay their debt off, right, to give them mercy, would it make sense to add 500,000 pounds more extra debt onto that? Or would the person that said that they was going to pay your debt off be like, you know what, you're taking a pee, man. I'm not going to do that no more. I'm not paying your debt off no more because you're taking a mick. You're adding more and more debt onto the debt that you already had instead of trying to shave some of the debt off. If someone was in debt for, for a million, surely they should try and shave off some of that million so that maybe it goes into 950,000 instead, 850,000, and then they might sin again. So now it goes 875,000. But if they're like, oh, so you're telling me you're going to pay off all my debt anyway? Okay, I'm just going to gamble, start gambling now and try and see if I can, you know what I mean? Get some extra money on the side for, for myself that I'm going to hide and then you still pay off my debt, and I'll be able to pocket the extras off the top. But then if I fail anyway, then you're still going to pay off the extras that I put on top of the debt. Verse 8 again, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cries unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually, because we're complaining that we're living in a world that God's laws are not being done. And all these Christians that say, oh, how come you're always talking about the law? Why wouldn't you want to talk about living in a world where the righteous things that God is about are the judgments that are being done? Wouldn't that, wouldn't everyone keeping God's laws make the world a better place? So how can they be against the laws? It doesn't make any sense, but it does make sense because these people, right, are wicked themselves, man. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 4, they that forsake the law, Praise the wicked. So these people, these Christians are praising the wicked because they don't care about God's laws and they're praising the wicked men because they're allowing the wicked ways to be the way that's accepted on the earth. But such as keep the law, contend with them. A Christian saying that the law is done away with and somebody that says that they're an atheist that doesn't believe in God and is in, into Satanism, what would be the difference in their works and how they live? What would be the difference in, in, the, in the physical things that you see them doing? What would be the difference, man? There wouldn't be one because they both believe that you can do whatever you want to do. That's what they'd both be doing, man. Second Earth chapter 15 and verse 9. And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the blood, all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a, as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. So God ain't forgot all the wickedness that's going on. And this Egypt that's being spoken about is America. Now people can say, oh nah, that's not the case. If you look at the history of America, that place deserves to be destroyed. And if you don't think it deserves to be destroyed, well that shows what kind of person you are, right? If you don't think that America des deserves to be destroyed, well, that shows what kind of person you are, man. Because the things that that place has did to the Native Americans, 
to the Negroes, to the Latinos, right? The things that, the, the, the philosophies that have been pushed out of that place, right? Are all wicked, man. Just the fact that that country's been in war for like so long since it's been a country, man. It's all over the place. But if you don't think that the country should be destroyed, then that shows what kind of person you are, man. Especially if you're somebody that claims to believe in the Bible. That would, that would mean that you're thinking that America is greater than the kingdom of heaven. Because in order for the kingdom of heaven to come, all of these other kingdoms have to be destroyed. And America's a great kingdom throughout the whole earth. They've got a lot of power and a lot of leverage to, to govern the world and manipulate the world into a way that they like it to be. That's why they're even the world trade currency, right? People need dollars to deal with oil now. That's slightly changing now. But America's not going to go without kicking and screaming and war's going to be a result of these things. Verse 13. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail. And with a feel for constellation, because Yahweh is going to start making famines come to the, on this earth, man. He's going to cause famines, especially in the land of America, because that's a place that's got a heavy judgment. And he's elect over there that he's gave stronger spirits. I would say, in my opinion, that the, the, the Israelite brothers that are over in America have got a slightly or a, a massively stronger spirit than Israelites that would be anywhere else. Because they have to deal with being in Babylon the Great Man, which is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. And they're going to receive a greater salvation than Israelites anywhere else because the land that they're living in is going to get completely destroyed off the face of the earth. Now, every man, a woman, and child is going to have their own particular journey of salvation, but the salvation that's going to be done from America, Babylon the Great, the North Country, mentioned in Jeremiah 24 7, that's a greater salvation, man. Verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, meaning that judgments are going to come to the people that live in this earth, man. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand at the fight against another, and swords in their hands, meaning judgments coming, man. Judgments are coming for these people. Verse 16 For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of, course of their actions shall stand in their power. Meaning that there's going to come a time where rules that and people, the normal algorithmic rules that people have are going to be changed so let's give an example man there's certain rules of engagement in this world where like women will argue with men be aggressive be saying whatever the hell they want to say be treating men like they think they can just talk to them any kind of way right and normally the man doesn't do anything what he would think in his mind to do because he knows that he's going to go to jail however the time is going to come where the man's going to say to hell with that rule this woman was talking to me a certain kind of way. I don't like that. So I'm going to show her that I can use my physical advantages over her. And if he's got the ability to overcome whatever police force or whatever strength tries to stand up against him to stop him from doing that, he's going to do it. And he's going to be able to do it because the course of his action is going to stand according to his power. Right? There's going to be people that usually, if they don't have the amount of money in their bank accounts, to buy particular items. They might walk past the car showroom every day. And they're like oh I would love to have one of those cars. But my bank balance doesn't have that amount in, the, in it at the moment. Or I don't have the particular credit necessary. To be able to get one of those cars on finance. So I can't have that car. It's quite unfortunate. But I can't have that car. I wish I could have it. But I can't. Maybe if I work a bit harder later on I'll be able to do it. But the time's going to come where people are going to say no to hell with that. I know that me and my boys can roll up to that place. Five of us, right, put on some balaclavas, run up in that place, get the keys, get that car and we're out of there. And that's what they're going to want to do. And if they're physically able to do it, they're going to do it. On a lower level, people will be like, well, in this corner shop, I want this food. I don't have the money for it right now. I can't get it. They're going to break that rule and they're going to just do what they want to do because they've got the power to do it, man. And there's many thousands of other situations that people can think of that these rules of engagement that normally, normally take place. People are going to go against those rules and do it the way they want to do. Verse 16, again, for there shall be sedition among men, meaning that they're going to be against their governments. They ain't going to care. Their governments, they're not going to trust their government no more because they're going to say, when I trusted in my government, they betrayed me, they betrayed my trust. They're not allowing me 
to live the way that I agree to act civilized for so that I can have a certain type of lifestyle. I listened to them. I did the things that they wanted me to do. I followed their rules and they have not held up their side of the bargain. So now I'm going to break their rules and I'm going to do it my way. That's what people are going to do, man. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able because, because people are going to be acting reckless like this, they're going to shut down cities. So within certain cities and certain places, things are going to be gridded off, man. And it's going to get grimy on earth. And a lot of people that have had it had a smooth run now, a lot of this high value man stuff where they're going around these tall guys that they're skinny though, right? And they players and that they think they they think that they're smooth with the ladies and all of that. And they taught this, they taught that, right? And they're able to flow through earth because there's police forces that will come and step in if they talk and act reckless to guys that could break their neck, right? But they can talk reckless and try and manipulate and play my game with certain men. And then say, yo, chat, L chat and all this. Yo, what's up, chat? Do you think I should do this chat on all these different streaming things and all of that? These kind of guys, they normally get away with that stuff. But the time's going to come where they can't travel around and do all these vlogs in real life, vlogging all, all this madness no more. And they're going to meet some of these people that they normally disrespect and they're going to get a reality check, man. Because the game, the rules of the, how the world works are going to be changed out of their favour now and be brought into the favour of somebody else that's more attuned to live in a different way. Right? The rules are going to be changed so that different people can now win for a time. And the people that are going to be able to win now are going to be those madmen, those lunatic type people, man. Those people that prior didn't have a voice or didn't have a say so. Those people that people that are into the prepping world and stuff like that would say would call them um, post apocalyptic warlords. So for people that watch shows like The Walking Dead, I'm talking about people like Negan, people like the governor. People like Rick Grimes, people like Michonne, right? People like Rick Grimes' boy, the other police officer, right? All of these kind of people, people like the, the whisperers, all of these mad people, man, that are carnal as hell and that are waiting for a time for the world to go wild because they've got a lot of wildness in them. And them people are going to win for a time. But that's going to, them people winning for that time is going to call for the cities to be shut down, right? But they're not going to be the real winners of that time because the real winners of that time are the people that believe in the Lord. Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. Verse 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. So because there's a lot of pride, people are just going around through cities, recording live, putting people on camera that are just living their everyday lives, right? Recording them antagonizing them and then when the person gets antagonized saying oh, why are you getting antagonized for bothering people man because there's people that are like this in the world or thinking oh i'm i'm the stuff because i've got i've got people following me on the social media or or even if they're not in none of that social media stuff oh i'm the stuff because i've got a job in my area that i make the most around my area and i've got the nicest house and the nicest car around my area nobody else around my area has got a 2023 motor. So I'm the stuff around my area. I'm the only one that's got a BMW in my ends. So I'm the stuff. Or I'm the only one in my area that's got a 15% body fat and lower. Or I'm the only one around my area that's six foot five. So I'm just that guy, man. Or I can punch up everyone around my area. So I'm the, I'm the man around there. Nobody can check me. They can't tell me nothing. Well, we're going to see, man. All you people that are trusting in your external things that you think you got, that's going to be what you're going to have to stand on in the time to come. You think you're tough? Okay, we're going to see. You think you're rich in your money, man? Okay, we're going to see. You think you're wise? You have an understanding. You know how to make a fire with a flint and all of this stuff. You think you know a prepping? Okay, we're going to see. If that's going to be, like, be able to save him, we're going to see, man. All, the, all your skills... You're going to try, you're going to be tested, man. Right? Just like how, if there's a man out there, that, that's why, if for people that understand anything to do with the history of the UFC, that's pretty much the foundation of how the UFC came to be. Right? Everyone wanted to know which fighting style is the best. 
It was like, oh, which, which fighting style works the best? Which fighting style works the best? Oh, I think boxing's the best, right? Oh, I think grappling's the best. Oh, I think kickboxing's the best. And when they started putting that together, there wasn't no weight classes. So there'd be a boxer with one glove on fighting against another guy, right? And they'd have one glove on to throw punches with and the other hand just in case he needed to grapple. And then they'd get into a fight, win or lose, whatever would happen. There'd be a guy that's big as hell, 400 pounds, against a guy that's like 180 pounds. Then they'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight, right? And then when they started fighting, they started realising, oh, actually, this grappling stuff is quite handy because this guy that's small was just able to beat up this guy that's huge, right? But when it goes down in this world, I'm not even trying to talk about UFC that like much. I'm just making a point that that's what people wanted to test and see which worked. And in this world, there's a lot of people that think that they've got things that work. So they think having a high value, man, you got to have six figures in your bank account, be six foot. You got to have all this networking stuff like that. You got to know this. You got to know that. You got a gold gym and all of this stuff. Okay, well, we're going to see if that's what's going to work, man. We're going to see versus somebody else that believes in the Lord. They think if you believe in the Lord and you have faith and you try to avoid certain things that will anger you, the Lord, right, Yahweh, Baasham Yahweh Shai, that's going to protect you. There's people that believe that. But there's other people that think, oh, you have to have knowledge in this world. You have to know things. You have to have knowledge. You have to understand things and all, all different things in this world. They think they're psychologists. They, all, they know all these different stats. They can pull a stat out of their ass for anything that you want to talk to them about. Well, statistically speaking, oh, well, there was a study in 1975 that da 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 You know, you've got those people. We're going to see if how that's going to work. You try and tell some cannibals about a study that you heard about in 1989 where they had 5,000 people of ages this and that this and that and this and that you try telling that to some cannibals that want to eat you and see how that goes for you right or one of you money guys you try bribing somebody that don't need money right now because the money don't mean nothing because people ain't playing by that financial system rules no more you try telling that person that you'll give them your ring as long as they leave you alone and guess what they're going to tell you no, I'm going to do what I want to do right now. And after I'm finished, I'm going to take the ring. Like, they're not going to care about what you're talking about. They ain't going to care. Or let's say you're a tough guy, right? And you're used to sparring in the gym, right? You used to spar in the gym. Oh, I do five-minute rounds. I, I spar with guys that, I spar with guys that are pros all the time, man. And I hold my own. Okay. All right. And in that spar, do you get a rest after three minutes is up? Do you hear the bell go ding, ding, ding? And then you get to rest, sit on the side, get a bit of advice given to you. Okay, your jab's going a bit low. You know, you need to keep that left hand up because you might try and come over and sneak over the top with the right hand. And you get a little sip of water, right? And then you go back to it, you touch gloves and all of that. You're not used to fighting where one, you're looking at one person and somebody else runs up behind you and smacks you in the head with a brick right? Then while you're on the floor, someone set a dog off on you. And then while the dog's biting you, five other guys are running around kicking you in your head. How do you train for that? Because most people in this world can't win that. And let's say, oh, someone's like, oh, well, I've got a gun and I've got, oh, okay. Well, then how do you handle that same situation? But all those five that I mentioned have got guns. You can't, right? But let's say you can. How do you handle the situation where nuclear missiles are flying to the country that you live in, right? Nuclear missiles are flying to the country that you live in at an astoundingly fast rate. They're going to be there in an hour. So you're living in the country that you live in. Nuclear missiles are coming to the country that you live in in one hour, right? They're coming to the country that you live in in one hour. You've got to get out of the country, otherwise you're dead. How do you overcome that situation by your own hand and your own might? What are you going to do? You're going to learn to fly on the spot? You go and grow wings out your spine and just fly now. No. And in that time, even all the groups that I just mentioned are going to realise that they need the Lord. Right? They need a miracle. But those men of faith are going to have been expecting that scenario that I just mentioned to happen. They're going to be expecting that. They're waiting for that. They're waiting to see nuclear war happen. And that's their desire to be saved out of that. That's the ultimate form of salvation that Israelite is waiting for, to be saved 
by what the world calls UFOs during a nuclear war. Now, some people think that that's funny. Yet that's what Israelites are waiting for. So we expect to see a nuclear war, but we expect to be saved from it, man. Whereas all you other people, you don't expect to see that, man. And all the beliefs that you people have, all the ways you people have been talking, it's going to have a consequence, man. And we're going to see. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy their houses with a sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So there's going to be a struggle for food. And when there's a struggle for food, all you women out there that think you've got a fat ass and all of this stuff, i got a fat ass, I'm a slim thicky and all of this stuff. When food is scarce, none of that slim thick stuff matters, man. Because all the men that you like, that are six foot plus and all of this, they've got all these muscles and all of that, which you can like whatever men you want to like. It's a good thing for men to go to the gym. No one's got a problem with that. But those men that go to the gym, they've got a certain basal metabolic rate. They need a certain amount of calories to keep themselves going. And they ain't going to want to give up their calories for your ass. They're going to look at you like a calorie burden. You understand? They're going to look at you like handgun. So if I give her some of my food, right, then that means I'm going to be hungry. And even the men that are normally simp over you, they're going to be looking at you like, okay, you want some of my food? What are you going to do for me? Right? And they're going to make you drop down and give them something, man. And then they still might say, nah, you're not getting under the food. I'm going to do you like how you did me in the world. When you used to make me take your ass out for dates and dip. That's how these men that, that you women view as weirdos are going to be treating you, man. But a lot of you don't think that's going to happen because your reality so far has not shown that. But like I said, the algorithm of certain interaction of this world are going to be changed. There's going to be a new choice. So it's not just going to be, oh, I'm offended. I don't want to go to jail, run away and escape from the situation. It's going to be, I'm offended. If the power of my hand can make me choose what I want to happen in this situation now, that's what I'm going to do. And in this time, even the police forces, because people are going to be seditious, they ain't going to have a choice to do it. They ain't going to even have the power to do anything, man. Because people are going to overcome them. The average police officer, anyway, when you really look at how they interact most of the time, they're not physically fit themselves. They're used to people just not resisting and they can just overpower people because people are scared of the law system behind it. It's not because the police, the average one, is really physically fit and can even really arrest most people if they try and put up any kind of resistance. And I ain't saying that people should resist against the police, but I'm making the point. The average police officer, when there's a situation that really requires police training, they get scared. They actually get scared, man. The average police officer. When it's a situation where there's another, where there's a criminal that might have a weapon of the same grade as what they have, they normally get scared and require all manner of types of backup. Now, there is some police officers that they get into their job, man, when, when that kind of stuff happens. They get their Clint Eastwood on and they handle that. But the majority don't. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy their houses with a sword. Meaning that people that are friends right now in their neighbourhood, man, they go to their neighbour's friend's, neighbor's friend's house. They celebrate each other's kids' birthdays with them and that. They travel out. They might even go on a holiday with each other and all of that. Then they're going to not be friends no more in the time to come, man, because of lack of bread. I remember there's a movie, I think it's called The Hole. And in this movie, some woman wants a man to fall in love with her, so she makes them go into an underground bunker and she hides the key on her, pretending like, oh, they got stuck down there because she's hoping that the guy falls in love with her down there. And while they're down there, he's down there with his other friend. So it's two men and one woman. But she, her plan was to just make the one guy fall in love with her. And then they've been down there on, down under there for a while now. So they're starting to get scared that they're going to die down there. And then the woman, like the, the friend, I mean, the guy's friend, is sneak, is secretly drinking a can of Coca-Cola, right? And the friend sees that he's drinking a can of Coca-Cola and not sharing it. And he loses his mind, man. And they fight over that can of Coca-Cola and he ends up strangling his friend to death, right? Over a can of Coca-Cola. His best friend that he knew for ages, as soon as famine started touching him and he started feeling like he's going to die of starvation or die of thirst, violence stirred upon him, man. 
And a lot of people don't think that that can happen. But it can happen. And it's going to happen. Thus saith the Lord, right? A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their house with a sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So people are going to be the, receiving judgment for the way they've lived, man. Now let's get this. Let me go to verse four, chapter 4, in fact. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 17. For they shall see the end of the wise. Who are the ones that are wise? The ones that believed in the Lord. And we're saying that we're not going to take the karogma, man. That thing mentioned in Revelation 13 and 16, we're not going to take it because we ain't got no wealth that we really need to keep, right? We might have a little bit of money to a certain degree. We might have a little, but all that stuff will count as loss when it comes time if we had anything. But most of us don't even that believe in the Lord because Yahweh makes it that way. But people look at that as though we're bums, we're waste mans, we need to step our game up. Well, that's the only reason I we believe in the Lord, because we ain't got no talents. We never had no skill in anything else. This is our last choice. Well, if you want to believe that, believe it. But I know that the Bible says that you're supposed to turn to the Lord in the days of your youth. You're not supposed to try and turn to the Lord when you ain't when when you when you had loads of options to do other things. I mean, when you don't have options to do loads of other things, you're meant to turn to him when you do do have options to do other things and choose him first. Instead of those other things. Verse 17. For they shall see the end of the wise. And shall not understand what God and his counsel have decreed of him. And to what end the Lord have set him in safety. Because they're going to look at the people that end up being able to survive this harsh time that's coming. And be like hang on he ain't even that big. I'm 6'5". He's only like 5'9". He ain't even that big man. Oh he's only 5'7". He he's only 5'2". Oh he's on 5'3". He ain't even that big. How's he surviving this? Oh, I'm a prepper. I've, 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 been tre I've been prepping for this kind of stuff. SHTF for a little time, man. I had all these vacuum packed beef jerkies and all these oat bars stacked. I've been storing up these tins of ravioli for the last five years. And you're trying to tell me that this guy's also surviving this time too. But he's just talking to me about the Bible all the time, huh? What's going on? They ain't going to understand why these people are safe. They shall see him and despise him, but God shall laugh them to scorn because they're going to be angry with that, man. Because they're going to be like, hang on, the things that these people are saying is happening and they seem comfortable in this time. But I'm supposed to be a high value man. I'm supposed to be an alpha. I'm a prepper or I'm a wise man. These people in the world previously that I still trust in, they weren't nothing in that world. So why are these people comfortable now? They're going to have a problem with that. But God shall laugh them to scorn and they shall be here after a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. For he shall rend them, and cast them down headlong, and they shall be speechless. Excuse me, that they, sh that they shall be speechless, and he shall shake them, to the shake them from the foundation, and they shall be utterly laid waste, and be in sorrow, and a memorial shall perish. Because their ways of that they was talking about are going to be gone, man. There ain't going to be no one talking all that, oh man, red pill and all this stuff in the kingdom of heaven, man. There ain't going to be no one talking that. Which some of the talking points of that stuff are good talking points, man. But guess what? All those things that they say in that stuff that about, about women and all of that, that can be found in the Bible, man. That's All that stuff's been in the Bible a long time before that. Going into how men can simp, men simp over women and all this stuff. That's in the Bible, man. That's in there. And even they even talk, quote the Bible in that community. They quote the Bible all the time. They don't quote no other religious book, though, to try and use it to burn out women. Why not? Because then books don't mention it like that. Verse 20. And when they cast up the accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear and their own iniquities shall convince them to their face because they're going to remember all these different people, man. It ain't even just red pill. All these people. All these atheists, all these tattoo people, all these sports guys. Oh, I'm a football player. Oh, I'm an accountant. Oh, I work for District and Global. Oh, I work for Fabio's Fabrics. All the, whatever your career is, man. All you people, man. That haven't repented and thought that the Bible is a joke. You're gonna, we're going to see, man. Verse, f f Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such have afflicted him and made no account of his labour. So when you saw people reading the Bible, you thought, oh, this is a joke. It's been changed. I don't know, there's so many versions. It's been translated into so many languages. Well, why wouldn't it be? If, if a book's the truth, why wouldn't it be translated into every single language that people speak so that they can hear about it? 
Why wouldn't it be? Why would you expect that everyone has to learn the language of the book in order for the book to hold validity? Even books of the world get translated into, into different languages, right? I'm pretty sure there's probably a Spanish version of the Three Little, Three Little Pigs. I'm pretty sure there's probably a Spanish version of Harry Potter. I'm pretty sure there's probably a Hebrew version or Yiddish version of Harry Potter books, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that you can find a French version of Jack and the Beanstalk, right? I'm pretty sure you can find different languages of every book. I'm pretty sure you can find different versions, different languages of dictionaries, right? I'm pretty sure you can find a dictionary in different languages. Does that mean that them words ain't true in the dictionary now? Verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear because they're going to hear, remember the judgments that they heard for people that went through these times, man. They're going to remember that the people that was telling them about these times was telling them about certain things that are going to take place, man. And that's when these people's reality is going to change. Because when that lockdown came, right, and people couldn't come out of their house no more, and couldn't just go to the night, all these women couldn't just go to the nightclub and have men buying them drinks no more, right? What was they doing? What was they doing, man? In that time when they realised that a lot of these men that they thought cared about them, no, they didn't care about you. They cared about clapping the cheeks. And once the cheeks was, was on quarantine, they was like, to hell with your ass. And then some of y'all women realised you was just side chicks, man. Concubines, you know? Which is all the majority, a lot, what a lot of the majority of you are even worth to be anyway, man. You ain't even worth to be no more than that. We're living in a world where concubines are trying to talk like their wives. It's ridiculous. Verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirits shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. Because they're going to see people that they mocked lives being better than theirs in that time, man. But they were spending all their time to make sure that their lives was never like these people's lives because they thought that their lives were a joke. They was like, I would never want to be like this. I'd rather die than believe in a God that's like what the God you're talking about. That's some of the things that some of these people have said. Some of these people have even said, I hope that I see you during the day of the Lord. And some of those people that said these statements to men that, men that are about the scriptures are going to see them. And they're going to wish that they never said those things, man, because they're going to be condemned in that time. Verse 4, we fools are counting his life madness and his enemy without honour. But it's going to actually be the flip reverse of that because their lives are going to be the ones that's without honour. And they're going to realise that all the stuff that they previously was doing was of no value, man. How is he numbered among the children of God and his lot among the saints? So all that stuff that he was doing, oh, i got people sending me money now. How, um, you, they're pretending like they're helping people's lives, right? Oh, I'm helping people's lives and all of this. But then, no, you ain't, man. You ain't helping no one, man. You ain't helping nothing. Even, even us as believers of the Lord, we don't believe that we're helping no one. God's got to help them. All we're doing is telling them about the person that can help them. We're not saving no one's life. No Bible believer is saving anyone's life. God's got to save their life, man. If they're the chosen, if they're of the elect, then they're going to get it. Because they, they've got that faith mixed in with the truth, that they, with, the, with the word that they've heard. If they ain't been given that gift of faith, then there ain't nothing you can do for them. But you can't give them the gift of faith. Because if we could, we'd give it to all of our family and all of our loved ones, right? But we can't make none of our loved ones believe what we believe. It's up to God whether they believe it or not. Verse 5, how is he numbered among the children of God and his lot among the saints? They're not going to understand it, man. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. They're, they're going to be like, man, the way that things really work, we didn't have a clue. I thought that the world was this way, but it seems like it's something else. I don't even understand what's going on anymore. We weird ourselves in a way of wickedness. They're going to know that their lives that they're living right now that seem glorious were wicked lives, man. All these city girl vibes going to get men to buy a drink when a man tries to come and holler at them. 
They ask them to buy their groceries, right? Leaving their, leaving their children in the house for six days straight so that they can go to a, a concert of their favourite rapper or so that they can go to the nightclub, right? Setting up an OnlyFans, all this kind of stuff, man, right? Lying on men when the, when the break, relationship breaks up, making sure that they date criminals so that whenever the relationship breaks up, they can now all of a sudden want to talk about the, commun the um, corrupt activity that that man was doing, not because they care about righteousness, but because that was a thing that they always had in their back pocket if the relationship went bad. But while they was with the guy and able to get money from him, from his criminal activity, they didn't have a problem. But now that their relationships broke up, now I'm going to say something about it to the police. All of these kind of women, man, they're going to realise that they was just as wicked as the minute they was attracted to, man. We weird ourselves in a way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where they lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. They're going to know that they didn't know nothing. There's a lot of people that think that they know the Lord because they got a, a cross around their neck, man. Or they got a, they got a, they might have a Bible verse tattooed on them, man. When we're not supposed to even do that. Now, if you know that you're not supposed to do it now, that we're not supposed to get tattooed, fair enough, man. Don't get no more. But there's a lot of people that will have a, a woman might have a Bible verse tatted on a on a on a quadricep and think that she believes in the Lord now. Think she deep now. That don't mean nothing, man. There's there's a there's one Israelite guy out there, one uh, one uh, Latino. He's got the name Yahweh tattooed on a pale or Hebrew right on his neck. But that you're not supposed to get a tattoo though. So that ain't right just that you've got Yahweh's name tattooed on you. Because if you knew him, you wouldn't do that. If you wanted him around your neck, you could have just bought a piece of jewellery that's got the name written on, on it and then put that around your neck, right? Verse 8. What have pride profited us? Or what good have riches with our vaunting brought us? So all that money, all them money mans, man. All you money guys that have got all these supercars and all of this stuff, right? Or all you people that end, even in the world like that, but you've got money to you, around your particular area that you live in, man. Or all you people that was chasing the riches to a high, a super high degree, man. And in all, in all the chase, didn't think about the Lord once until your life started getting bad. Verse 9, all those things are passed away like a shadow. And as a post that hasted by. I mean, that's going to go, man. Riches can go quick. Just watch how quick the true believers in the Lord are going to go from average everyday lives to even poverty damn near lives to being rich overnight. Just watch how quick it's going to be. It's going to be night and day. Let me jump down to this point, verse 13. Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end and had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. All these people are going to know that their lives are wicked, man. And all these people are going to know that the lifestyles that they lived had consequences, man, which is what the topic of this video was. All the ways that you people are living right now that have chosen to not repent and think that the Bible is a joke, think that you don't have to believe in Yahweh and all of this stuff. The lifestyles that you're living are going to have consequences, man, and you're going to experience it. And I think that's a good place to end the lesson, man. All wickedness has gonna, is going to have a consequence when Yahweh brings his wrath on the earth. All praises to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Rakar Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel, Shalawam.